Hello everyone, this is Harry Gill and we are here in the next topic of concurrency chapter which is writing thread safe code. Before we jump into how to write a thread safe code, let's first look into what problems do we face when we write our multi-threading code. And in this video, we will see the problem and in next couple of videos, we will see how to write thread safe code. So our agenda is just to understand what are the different problems we face when we write multi-threading and what we need to keep in mind. Let me jump into IntelliJ and let me start with an example where I will write a multi-threaded code. The code that I'm going to write is that I will have a static variable and then I'm going to create 10 different threads and ask each thread to increment and print the number. So I will start with creating a variable called counter and I will create it as a static and initialize the value to zero. In the main method, I'm going to create executor service and this will be the executor service which will manage 10 threads. I'm going to submit a task to the service and this task is pretty simple. This task will simply increment the counter and print it. Let me also shut down the service in the finally method. Now, instead of copy pasting this submit method 10 times, I'm going to wrap it up in a for loop and run that for loop from zero to nine. So this is a simple program where you would expect that each thread would go and get the counter, increment the counter to its next value and print it. And so will the other threads do. So what we would expect is that to see a number from one to 10 because we have a pre-incrementer so it will first increment and then print it. Now let me save this program and run it and see the output. Now as you see the output that we see in here is very different to what the program looks like. Let's jump into a slide and let's see what is the problem with the code that we wrote. For reference I'm, I have copy pasted the output into the slide here. So this program has three different problems. The first problem is duplicacy. In here, as you see, there are multiple ones in the output. The second problem that we see is we were expecting the threads to increment the number 10 times, which means the value of the counter should have been 10. But in this case, the highest value we see is eight. So there are missing numbers. So we have nine and 10 missing. The third problem that we see is the output is out of order. We don't see the threads incrementing it in the sequence. We see them out of order. Now let's just look into the code flow and see what we have done. So when the program starts, we have created a counter static variable. And in the main thread, once the execution starts, we create a service executor and then submit 10 tasks to it to increment one number. And since the service executor is managing 10 different threads, so it will use each thread to increment the counter once. Let's look into more the task that each thread is doing, and especially the counter incrementer. So in this case, the counter incrementer expression looks pretty simple. However, in the background, there are three different operations happening. The thread would get the counter and it would increment the counter and then it would write the incremented value back into the counter. And the fourth operation that the thread does is to print the counter value. Now let's look at the timelines. Say we have thread one and we have thread two. And thread one starts, it reads the counter, it increments it and write the incremented value, which is one back to the counter and prints it. That green dot represents the print statement. Now, while thread one was running, like while it was doing its work, thread two comes in play. Thread two again reads the counter and the time when thread two reads the counter, thread one hasn't written back the value one. So thread two also reads it as zero. And now within the thread, it will increment the counter and write the value one back to the counter. Due to the parallel task that we are running, we had this problem. We had the problem of thread two reading the value 
before the thread one has updated. And this is the reason why we see duplicate numbers. So if thread one, when it reaches the green dot, it's gonna print one. Thread two will also print the value of one. So both thread one and thread two printed one. And this is the reason why there are some increments that did not happen towards the end. So ideally, thread two was supposed to take number one and increment it to two, but it took zero and incremented it to one. So it did a kind of a duplicate work as thread one. And the work that thread two was supposed to do, thread three would do it. And similarly, now the last thread that would ideally should have incremented from number nine to number 10. In our case, that only incremented from number seven to number eight, because there might be one another thread that ran in parallel and fall in the similar situation. Now let's see why the numbers were out of sequence. Let's say now thread three comes in. The speed at which that thread ran was pretty high and it reads the number one, increments it to two, writes it and also straight away prints it. In this case, if you compare it with thread two, thread three will print number two first and thread two will print number one afterwards. So first we will see two in the output and then one. So similarly, there are other threads. Some threads run faster, some threads run slower because it depends on the OS thread scheduler, like when it picks up and gives that thread a CPU time. That's the reason why we see numbers out of order. Now we know what the problem is. Now let's see how to fix that. Let's say you don't care about the sequence. You only care about that each thread should increment the number exactly once and there shouldn't be two threads doing the duplicate work. Like there shouldn't be overlap that we have seen in this. So if we want to achieve that, we want to do the three operations, which is get, increment, and write as one unit. When, when one thread is doing those three operations, it should get exclusive access to counter. If the other threads comes to read the counter, then they have to wait. Then we can guarantee that all the threads will increment the number once and we will not see any duplicates and we will also see all the numbers from one to 10. Now let's say you also care about the sequence, which means you want the numbers to always be one, two, three, and so on until 10. In that case, we will also have to include the print within that transaction, which means until the thread one reads the counter, increments it, writes it back, and prints it, the other threads have to wait for it. On the next slide, this would be the picture when we only care about the three operations, which is read, increment, and write to be atomic. So unless thread one is done writing it back to the counter, thread two has to wait. No matter when the thread two started, if thread one already got access to counter, thread two has to wait. And it will only get the access once thread one is done. And when, when it's done, the value will always be one in this case. And as you see, the print statement in the thread one happens long time after the print statement in thread two, which means in this particular case, two will still be printed ahead of one. So we will still be out of sequence. However, we can guarantee that there will not be any duplicacy with this solution and there will not be any missing numbers. Now on this next slide, I have included the print statement as well into that atomic transaction. So in this case, thread one will read the counter, increment it, write the incremented value back to the counter and print the value as well. And until thread one is done with all these four operations, thread two will not have access to the counter. Once thread two has access, thread three wouldn't have access until it's done with all its operation. And once we do this, we can not only guarantee that all the threads are incrementing the number once, we can also guarantee that the print sequence is also maintained. Now, as you see, the example that we have seen, the program is not written in a thread safe way, particularly because we are doing an increment operation 
on an integer and that integer object is not thread safe. In the next video, we will see how to combine those increment operation together. And we will also see a way how we can combine those increment operation and along with the print statement together so that we can get the desired output. If you like this video, please hit the like button and do not forget to watch the next video where I will tell the solution of this problem. Until next time, bye-bye.